wise man has rightly said knowledge is power information is liberating education is the premise of progress in every society in every family in our mira family our students our merites inculcate the values that help them to be motivated to be inspired to be respectful and to aspire for a better tomorrow our students not only aim to achieve academic excellence but also learn to develop global citizenship skills the skills that can transform them into compassionate empathetic and responsible citizens of the dynamic world this journey of discovery of our students from being learners to leaders from being students to scholars from being future citizens to global citizens is the beginning of self discovery in the true sense this discovery is the real education greetings of the day to all on behalf of the principal the school management the staff and the entire mira family we welcome you all to the third shri k b oberoi memorial lecture 2023 it is indeed a proud moment for us to welcome and introduce the chief guest for today a diligent and enterprising learner from his school days our chief guest is a passionate enthusiastic and an accomplished professional i am honored to welcome our keynote speaker for today's event mr paul gori whose journey and accomplishments are a true testament to the fact that hard work is the key to success Bhavul is an alumni of the 2011 batch. He is presently working with Meta and is based in London. Bhavul, your presence has added glory to the event and supplement vibrancy to our august audience. Today's event is an occasion to commemorate the vision and the values of one of our founders, Sri K B Oberoi. who played a significant role in the inception design and infrastructure of this beautiful institute his values of courage tenacity stoic resilience in the face of adversity calm demeanor are the traits we remember him by sir was a father figure a true gentleman his magnanimity elevated his stature to great heights This event is a celebration of his life and legacy. Our chief guest, Bhavul Gori, is a technical mastermind. At present, he is working as a senior machine learning engineer at Meta, previously known as Facebook. He is also quite active as an independent researcher. Earlier to this profile, he has contributed to the field of applied machine learning research engineering. at zap he is an engineering graduate from bits pilani and also holds the distinction of completing his ms in mathematics from the same alma mater in a short span of his professional journey bhavul has already proved his prowess in the field of generative artificial intelligence and product designing skills he enjoys leading diverse teams mentoring and fostering innovation through exploratory and challenging projects he has been conferred with many awards and honors he has been the recipient of the be bold award presented to him by jeffrey zevek the director at meta as a beacon of change in technology he has also been decorated with the einstein award conferred by the endurance international group Bhavul has also won many international hackathons. Similar to Sri K B Oberoi, Bhavul has a multifaceted persona. As he combines his passion for technology with love for reading and writing latest research papers, conquering new milestones with every path to tread, he indeed is an epitome of success and excellence. Now I request Bhavul. Our keynote speaker to deliver the third Sri K B Oberoi Memorial Lecture. Uh, wow, 
Uh, thanks for such a heartwarming introduction. I don't really know if I deserve any of that. Uh, but hi, everyone. Uh, it's an honor to be here, to be able to speak to the Mira family and to be able to finally share some of my own words today with every one of you. Uh, I'm really, really thankful to everyone who's listening, who's watching this at any point. Um, unfortunately, I could not be in Delhi in the school to give this in person, uh, but I'm really grateful for Minakshi ma'am, Sonia ma'am, Meeta ma'am, everyone who's kind of uh, helped to put this together and give me this opportunity. And I also want to just extend my warm thanks to uh, KB Obroy sir and Mohini Obroy ma'am, uh, who built the foundation of the school uh, that I'm, I'm, I, I'm so proud of to call my own school, right? So uh, with that being said, let's, let, let me just dive deep into today's talk, and it's about hacking life's algorithm. So first of all, right, who am I? Um, and who are you? And is this, uh, is this for you? And why are you here, right? The latter part of the questions are maybe for you. Uh, but I can maybe tell a little bit about myself, uh, right? So I'm a professional procrastinator, an alarm smoothing specialist, and a director for endless scroll operations. And none of that is a lie. To be very honest, I, I am uh, all of those things. And uh, probably not the poster boy that I mean, actually, I'm told I was. Uh, <laughs> Uh, and that's the thing, right? I think every one of us have our own quirks. Um, I, I, I'm not some special person in any way. And I want everyone to kind of know that, right? We are more alike than you usually think we are, right? Even if you pick out any person, any random person on the planet, 99% of the genes are the same. Um, and there are many patterns uh, further on to success and failures. And and my hope is that whatever I uh, am able to, whatever I've been able to learn in the last 30 years uh, of my existence, uh, perhaps some of those patterns can be useful, right? Um, that, that, that's uh, what I feel. And that's what the talk's going to be about. And officially what the world thinks I am is basically, and, and <laughs> what I've gained uh, as a title officially is a senior machine learning engineer at Meta. Meta is the company that, uh, most of you would be familiar with. Uh, it's the company that um, owns WhatsApp, Instagram, Facebook, even Oculus Quest, if you're aware about virtual and augmented reality. And uh, for me, while I've been here for more than two years now, I've primarily worked on two different products. One, uh, the, the at first when I joined, I worked on personalizing recommendation for reels and for videos. So, um, yeah, so, uh, if, if the reels are doing a good job at uh, capturing your interest uh, quickly, then perhaps there's a little bit of my contribution there. Uh, and recently, I've been working more so on something more generative AI. So this, when I say generative AI, it's very similar to how ChatGPT or Dolly is. Uh, it's the same kind of work, but we're using it for a certain product to enhance the backgrounds of existing products if you see here, the purse is the same, but we are generating different backgrounds for it or just changing the aspect ratio or just changing the text itself, generating a new text for a, a post and those kinds of things. So that's what I've been up to recently. Um, and beyond that, I also blog sometimes. I'm, I'm an open source contributor. I do tend to um, coach uh, people on their career sometimes. I've been a keynote speaker at conferences and um, I've gathered a little bit of a rookie social media following as well. Um, but yeah, the, the journey, right? If you are here for the journey, this is how my journey looked like, uh, right? Started at Mira Model School, spent uh, 12 years there from first standard till 12th standard, um, moved on to Bits Pilani. This was a Goa campus, not the Pilani campus. Um, and then moved on to Directi, which may, many of you may not know, but it it was at the time one of the biggest firms, uh, IT firms in India. Uh, and then moved on to a startup, uh, which was named Zapper, and have recently been at Meta from the last two, two and a half years. 
right? But the thing is that, you know, this seems like a very straightforward path so far. Um, but it's it's never a straight line, actually. <laughs> Even when I was at Media Model School, I uh, suffered from social media addiction. At that point, Facebook was getting popular. And I used to spend hours and hours on Facebook. Um, please don't go uh, have a look at all my old posts. I don't want you to have any look at all that embarrassing stuff. I did also engage in a relationship uh, when I was uh, in 11th standard and I suffered a heartbreak then. And maybe it contributed a little bit to not preparing well enough to get into IITs. But overall, I was able to still, uh, you know, get into a bit uh, campus and that was good enough as well. Um, that's not all. At BITS, there were other sort of challenges. Uh, when I joined, I did not get the computer science degree that I wanted. And I had to uh, actually fight inside the campus and in the first year kind of be at a certain position to even uh, even be able to claim a computer science degree for myself. And I had to just compete with a lot of people for that. Um, but then that was not enough. Um, I had a lot of uh, average grades, you know, it's always a little bit of a shock when you're in school and you're, you know, you're among the toppers in the school and you suddenly go into a new environment and you're back at ground. Uh, and it felt it felt pretty bad uh, that, you know, some of the grades were B, some of the grades were C, in fact. Uh, so there were uh, very few A's in my uh, mark sheet, right? And perhaps it's not something that a lot of the teachers who invited me were even expecting, but... <laughs> It is how it is. Uh, fell in love again um, at Bits Milani um, and have been in relationship ever since. Um, and then uh, the biggest thing that I think I learned from being in university was to start doing what I love or what I like, right? And just spend more and more time on that. And that kind of led me to my first company. Uh, it was an accomplishment, not just because Direct Eye was one of the biggest and most wanted companies at the time, but also because I was the very first person got placed from the campus. I got obviously a decent package uh, and all that stuff, but all the benefits, but it, it was it, it was great to be the first person among 600 to get placed. Um, and then working at Direct Eye, uh, was fun, a lot of new learnings, being a professional for the first time after being just a uh, amateur for uh, for a long time. Um, and then I decided maybe it's time to study further, right? But then I left that path. I did not, I, I applied for masters. I got admits from a couple of universities and I took to ignore that path and just follow my own lead uh, from then on. And, and, uh, and the reason I was going to go for masters was just to get more deeper into machine learning and artificial intelligence or AI, uh, which you might be hearing quite a lot of uh, nowadays. Um, but uh, because at that point, it was pretty hard. This was, this I'm talking about 2016, 2017. It was not easy to get an AI job inside of India. Even my work at Direct Eye was not AI related at the time. Um, and I really wanted to do that, right? I was, I, I felt pretty passionate about doing AI. And, um, and that's something that I had to fight for again. Um, and I did that without going the usual route of just going to do a master's in the US and then just get a job. And then it's sort of like an easier transition. But uh, my, my values and my principles there were that, hey, I, I don't want to repeat the courses that are somewhat already covered in bits. And I would rather spend all that time actually building something with AI and learning along the way. And that's what I tried to do. I did a few freelancing uh, gigs and ultimately turned that into a full-time ML job at Zapper. Um, and at Zapper, again, it's a new company. You join and nobody knows you. All the rapport that I had built at Direct Eyes vanished. So now I have to prove my value again take some time. Eventually, I didn't stop at that, right? I kept growing at Zapper, uh, had a couple of promotions there, but that was not it. I wanted to outgrow out of it, uh, learn more things than there were uh, at that company to learn. And I did that uh, in my spare time and however I could. And I outgrew my team and became the first person from Zapper to uh, both get uh, hired 
in a fan company or a, or a company like Meta, one of the tech giants, as well as the first person who actually got an offer from abroad directly, right? Because until Zapra, I was working in Bangalore and suddenly I get an offer from to move to the uh, to London in the United Kingdom. So my, my point of all of this was that it's never going to be a straight path for anyone, right? It's always going to be zigzag, a lot of ups and downs, right? And journey is never a straight line unless you really zoom out. If you really zoom out and look at it from a decade's angle, sure, it'll look like a straight line. Uh, but from a days, from a weeks, even from sometimes months uh, perspective, it's going to be a lot of ups and downs. And that's completely fine as long as the progress is happening. Um, and, and that's something that you need to really, um, that's something that I learned uh, quite late, I feel. Um, and it's, it's useful to actually zoom out and look at things from a perspective of, you know, how have things changed in the last six months? Have they been, become better than before? Uh, and that just helps. Uh, but all the details uh, lie uh, of like what are the ingredients for success? How did I get where I am right now? All of those actually lie in those details, right? They don't lie in the straight line path. Uh, so let's try to zoom in to the source code of my life and learn from it about hacking for success. And just three steps, actually four, uh, but the fourth one is more so a suggestion for me, from me. So the first one is uh, power of appreciation. So here's something that gonna happened. Uh, again, an AI image. Uh, so please uh, forgive any spelling mistakes in the speech bubbles. Uh, but I tried to depict something that had happened to me. Uh, real life incident happened at Mira Model School. Uh, I think it was from class one or class two. I do. I have a faded memory of which class it was. Uh, but the class teacher basically told uh, my dad, who had joined me in a parents teacher meeting that you know, he needs to change his uh, peers and he needs to focus on his studies. Um, and my, I, and I was that kind of guy, actually. <laughs> I was not the brightest kid in the class uh, and not even close by any margin. Uh, my, my percentage used to over around 50%, just barely passing. Um, and, and my dad was pretty confident at the time. And I don't know where that confidence came from, but... Uh, you know, this is exactly what he said. I, I I remember it to this day that he just said that I'm not worried about him. He'll do well. And there was a little bit of confidence boost that you get from that sort of a faith. Um, even if it's, you know, even if they, you don't know the source behind that faith, there's a lot of boost that you can get from that. Slowly, it did change things. Uh, I don't know what changed, but on fifth standard, somehow I ended up scoring somewhere in the late 60s in percentage or uh, perhaps I think more closer to 70% if I remember correctly. And for some reason, uh, the class teacher at the time, Rita, madam, ma'am, I remember from fifth standard, uh, was able to, uh, you know, give me a position or a rank in the class. And it was a 13th position, but I was the happiest person alive that day <laughs> uh, because, you know, I never expected me to get anywhere closer to having a rank someday uh, and this was this was a great surprise and and it was a surprise for me because I don't really know what I did so well in fifth standard to even reach that position perhaps I didn't do much right it's it's anyway a 13th position uh, but at the time I know I was the happiest person in the class um, and that that um, led to another thing uh, so when I moved to sixth standard I was quite fond of technology already. Um, I was spending a lot of time using my dad's phone once he arrived back from office. And I really asked my mom that, can I buy a phone for myself? And this is, uh, uh, this is not normal <laughs> uh, because this is back in, what, 2004, 2005. And at that moment, and, um, most kids would not have a phone. Most kids would not ha uh, did not have a phone on, uh, from my generation until they reached maybe 10th, 11th standard. Uh, maybe some some of them even got them in college directly. So it was quite unusual to ask a, a cell phone f just for myself. Uh, and uh, my mom just said that you need to score at least 75% to get a new phone. And uh, that's exactly what I did. <laughs> 
it was a very calculated move but exactly scored 75.033 percent and and that's how uh, it, it became sort of a reward mechanism uh, eventually in seventh standard i changed the phone again in eighth standard i changed the phone again and i i change phones every year <laughs> by kind of having this sort of a conditional bet with my mom <laughs> and uh, you know uh, it did work out well for me it was a weird way of having a reward model um but it did help me because i it helped me form a goal and i knew that i would get rewarded uh, once uh, i do perform at that capacity and slowly as i started doing that i think i realized that i can perform right and the perspective changes right the perspective that i had at fourth standard where i used to think of myself as a nobody um changes to um me thinking a little more highly about myself um, and thinking about like how i can perhaps be in the top scorers in the class or at least uh, score well enough in exams um and this is the the continuous phones things buying me new phones every year um it's not because my family was rich by any means it was just that they rewarded my hard work and they believed in me and they 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 felt like it was a fair reward um and that's that's the message that i really want to give to everyone now from this which is the power of appreciation right so um everyone's using instagram facebook i'm well aware that everyone's using it uh instead of the lo- the likes and comments that you generally leave on these social media platforms maybe try approaching people more so in person uh, on a call speak it out say thank you say anything good that they do when and when and whenever they do that uh, those have become a little more rare nowadays and you never know what sort of power they contain right They're saying just that uh, thank you i really believe in you i i have full confidence in you those things can sometimes change perspectives they can change lives they can change uh, beliefs and those beliefs can turn into actions which can turn into success and i think that's that's the uh, first thing uh, first lesson the second lesson uh, is more so involved with all the heroes i have at mira model school right first i, I obviously covered about my parents uh, who have given birth to me and taken care of me uh but the next best uh people i have in my life who have had the biggest influence are my heroes at mira model school i'm going to start one by one but i don't have a large list right now um and the whole perspective here that i want to i want you to take away from this is that i try to learn a few things from some of my heroes and you should try to find your heroes uh while you're at school what happened to me in the la- latter part of my school life from maybe uh, 10th standard to 12th standard was uh, or even 11th standard to 12th standard was that i i switched from a, a person on the left to the person on the right and that's a big change uh, to happen in 2 years or maybe even 2 and a half 3 years um and there are few heroes of mine who are responsible for this and solely responsible i feel at some capacity so first and foremost is dipika ma'am um i think she always pushed me and uh, she always saw more in me than i could at the time uh, i was uh, i was a good student so it was hard for me to uh, say no to her but then again i used to always be hesitant about accepting any new responsibility accepting any new opportunity because a lot of times i was of that opinion where i used to feel afraid hey what if i don't what if i don't do well at this what if i screw it up in some way um and and she was she sort of always had some sort of a belief um and she would just ask me to do things uh, the biggest thing i remember was uh, vividly remember that after one of i think it was the maths exam um and a, a mock exam that was happening before both um and she just approached me and she uh, told me that hey i want you to host an investiture ceremony this time and that was a big deal for me because i had never been on stage never done public speaking before uh, she had also pushed me for to join prefectural board so a lot of the 
um, traits in myself which I uh, which I imbibe to become more responsible to take on bigger opportunities to uh, you know take on bigger steps and uh, and and sort of form that belief in myself all of those have come due to her and I think uh, yeah there's just I'm always indebted to her um, fun fact the picture on the bottom left it's there on Facebook don't try to find it uh, but for investiture I was so afraid but I had said yes so I had prepared a 14 page script because I had written down every single word that I would say and that's what I did on stage I don't know if everyone knows this maybe a couple of people do uh, but it was that well prepared because I just didn't want anything to go bad um, and that that happened right and eventually it got to a stage where I can do public speaking quite well nowadays. Uh, I've, I've spoken at conferences, I've spoken quite a bit internally uh, at Meta and um, I do external coaching as well. So all of all of that, I think the, the beginning or the inception of that happened from here. And I, I, I'm i just super grateful to Deepika Ma'am for that. Um, this is all, by the way, besides this, the fantastic teacher she is at mathematics, right? And um, if she had not been that way i would not have been fascinated enough by mathematics to even take a master's degree in mathematics at with spelan so uh, so kudos to her the second hero i want to talk about is sonia ma'am sonia ma'am has always been very close to my heart uh, just because i think besides all the chemistry that uh, she used to teach and uh, i used to mostly understand chemistry was never my thing uh, but I used to still enjoy her lectures so much just because she always brought this passion, this love for teaching in a, in a classroom. I even remember there was a very uh, specific incident where somebody was uh, throwing chalks in the classroom and she re recognized that, you know, people are not paying attention to the class. She just got uh, upset and left the classroom. And everyone apologized later on that, hey, please don't do this. Uh, we really like the way you teach. Uh, and it, it, it makes sense, uh, you know. that Even then, I felt like the, the kind of passion and energy she brings to the table, it requires that attention, right? And it should get that attention and respect. And, and there was, um, it, it almost felt like I was uh, getting entertained. And it was infectious and I tried to imbibe that within me. So whenever I'm doing some work nowadays, um, I try to do it with a smile. Whenever I'm trying to do something new, I try to do it with passion. Uh, and these are some, you know, things that make day-to-day -day life simpler, even when it's hard. Right? It, it makes it easy if you love what you're doing. And I think that's what I grabbed from her, right? That's what I learned from her. Um, again, can never be taught in a classroom by just explicitly teaching that. These are things that I just imbibed from her while she was there, while she was present, implicitly learning these things while she was teaching chemistry, right? So uh, so my message to everyone at school right now is just to maybe think from that perspective, right? If, if whatever's going on in the class gets a little too boring, uh, maybe think more about what is happening? Where are you in, uh, at that moment, right? What is happening in that class? How are people behaving? How is the teacher trying to teach? Uh, what all effort is she putting in, right? She or he. Uh, so, yeah, that's uh, that's my take. Uh, one more thing that's been very special about Sonia Ma'am is that she's always had that mother's love in the way she speaks uh, to every child. And she's done that with me as well. I always call her uh, my second mother, uh, because because of the same reason uh, that she's always helped me out with, you know, tiniest of things. I've approached her stating things of the sort like, hey, I'm really uh, facing a hard time trying to quit Facebook or not use social media. And she's helped out with those things. That's not at all related with studying in any way. A uh, third um, hero that I want to talk about today is Raj sir. Uh, I think it's a perfect uh, segue from Sonia ma'am because he also br brought with himself always some infectious energy and passion. He used to teach C++ like there's some magic happening in, in the language, in programming, and, and, and he certainly believes that. 
and i think some of that got transferred on to me um, and it kind of laid the foundation of my career right i remember distinctly remember feeling goosebumps on some of his classes i still have to this day the entire notebook of c++ that uh, i had learned from him and it's it's kept in a special cupboard at home because it's one of my pro- prized possessions um yeah and and i think if you had not done it that way i would not have taken all the steps that i took and i don't know where i really would be because uh, from a work perspective from where i've reached all of that started from here right so um thank you rat sir for for being there and for for doing it with all the passion that you bring to the table and last but certainly not the least is meeta ma'am um meeta ma'am taught me to be more human to be courageous to be kind to really realize the power of words um she was always i think unique from the beginning unlike other teachers i had seen or met until the day she started teaching us she was always more candid more honest she felt like a um a friend in some way she was just you know if there's something she cared about it showed if she, if there was something she didn't care about it showed as well and 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 that was pretty new uh, because every other teacher was trying to follow a certain curriculum that okay i need to teach this whether i like it or not and here i was seeing somebody who was just being more human in even in their classes right and and i think that's what stuck with me and eventually you know that piqued my curiosity i tried to get more in touch with her i read her blogs i discovered those blogs and uh, that kind of led me to start writing as well um i still don't think i write very well but um but a lot of people have complimented me on my writing and and none of that would have started without me the ma'am without all the inspiration she has uh, ha- uh, she's been and uh, yes yeah, so ever since then she's been just my go to life mentor and coach for everything <laughs> there isn't any any single thing that she would probably not know about me so uh, yeah she she is she is the one that i usually refer to whenever i am in a difficult situation that in my life and and to reach that stage so quickly within those span of 2 years it's a, it's a great achievement and to have a person like her um in my life is, i feel blessed by that um so that's that's those are my heroes right at mira model school and the ones i most fondly remember um but that's not all right uh, i think there were countless teachers who have had an impact on me uh these are the ones that i still stay quite a bit in touch with but uh, everyone else right Ev- starting from the very first standard to um you know sheetal ma'am uh, taught in math and third standard i have vivid memories i have memories of rita mata ma'am i have memories of um uh shalu ma'am and and so on and so forth um it's been a treasure to be at mira mall school and i still feel the same way i i i remember the farewell day i i me and my friends uh, had run down to canot place just so that we could have a small tiny gesture from ourselves to express how much gratitude we feel uh towards the school towards the teachers towards everyone who has contributed in any capacity to making the school where and what it is um and and yeah this was a tiny gesture and i have a very similar gesture but just in a more virtual capacity right now uh but i feel the same to every teacher uh, that has ever crossed paths with me so the message from all of this uh for anyone young anyone in school still is you know if if there are certain days which seem boring in school that can happen right it's a daily thing you get bored out of it sometimes um remember that these teachers that are in front of you um they've seen hundreds or thousands of children and their entire life paths and they've observed how things move and this probably the, the, that cannot be taught in any way right it only comes from experience it only comes from being a teacher for those many years so the kind of perspectives and wisdom they have in life that's very hard to get it from anyone else outside of school 
So, so my suggestion would be uh, to look at them as more than just, you know, teachers of a certain subject. Find your heroes within them and connect with them. Open up to them. Speak to them about what it is that you're going through right now. And, and you will find somebody who will uh, be the supportive pillar for you. Which brings me to my third point or third lesson, which is about hustle. And that's a necessary ingredient for success, as so I've realized in the last decade. I think everyone would have at some point heard or seen or felt uh, this uh, this sort of a statement or dialogue. Beta 11, 12th, I will read it. Truth is a little far away from that. It's that life only actually gets tougher with age, with experience, with time. And, you know, the most amount of fun you can have is probably, probably in primary school. You can still have a lot of fun. You can still enjoy your life quite a bit. But the but life will get tougher. The competition will get severe. Uh, you will um, have more responsibilities as time goes on. And and life does get tougher in that way. Uh, and there's just no way to avoid that. You remember this diagram that we just had seen a few slides back? It's, it's because there was a hustle that was never stopping from right from me model school perspective, right? I, I had a social media addiction. I fought against it. I had a heartbreak, fought against it. Could not clear IIT, fought against it. There was a continuous drive to be better um, at each and every stage. And maybe there are countless of stages that I've not been able to mention just because of the size of the slide, right? But But the idea is that the hustle wouldn't, really never stop you have to try to get better every single day and that is the ground truth uh, that you have to live by um, you get one person better every day in a year you get 37 times better than you were before um, and you just get one percent worse and you become just three percent of yourself um, and it's it's a huge thing that we we don't recognize recognize right so that you have if you strive to get better even by a very small margin every day it will compound over time and there is no easy way to beat that there is no easy way to beat time uh, right that's the only resource we have that's uh, we don't have in plenty right there's a limited amount of time everyone has on this planet uh, and the quicker you work hard the better network you're going to gain the farther you're going to go um, we are th this is a you know, quote from the web uh, that we are considered average of the five people we spend the most time with. You know, it could be your best friends, could be your family, could be your teachers. Uh, so it the network that you have at any point in life plays a huge part in what kind of person you end up becoming. Um, just to, you know, think about an example, right? Let's say going into meta or getting into meta was a goal for somebody, which I can imagine it might be a goal for some people out there. Right to be in Meta, to be in Google, to be in Microsoft, Facebook, um, Amazon, all of these kinds of companies. Um, if you work hard early enough at school, get into a good university, the chances of getting into a big company becomes easier because the big company recognizes the brand of the university. They will visit the campus. They will try to hire you because they already know that hey, you are already the the um, the the top. Uh, people of the batch and perhaps we should try to hire you before somebody else does so they try to compete for you uh, on the other hand if you try to push it for later because at some point in life you will have to hustle in the worst case you will be hustling once you have your own children and you know at that point you realize that hey i i really need to earn more money to support my family and at that point you'll be hustling but all that you're doing is that you are just pushing it to later and later and later and in a way just procrastinating when you're going to do the hard work because you're going to get to do it one day or another. Um, but if you go for a later path, right, you might get into an average university or a college um, and you'll have to work really very hard to get into a decent company and then again work very hard to get into Meta. Um, and 
you know, if you push it further to later, then let's just go into an average company wherever we can get placed. What's happening is you would have built a habit and a mindset while being in these average places to be around a bunch of people who who do not have big aspirations, right? They would not be very ambitious. Maybe one of the 10 of them would be, but most of the people are not going to be ambitious, right? Most of the people are going to be more than happy to uh, sit and Netflix, uh, you know, all their weekends uh, away in life. And as soon as you get into a good network, what you're going to see is that everyone around you has big goals. Everyone around you has big dreams and they're trying to push forward for it. And there, there is a peer effect of that. Um, and that is the thing that you go uh, to uh, go for to a good company and to a good university. It's you're not going into a great university for the teaching, for the books, or for the campus. You're actually going it for the people because all the people over there are smart. All of them are intelligent. All of them have big goals and dreams and aspirations. And and to be in that sort of a network takes hard work. But once you are in that network, it starts paying off because. Every one of them is going to go to a big place and your life gets sorted out overall. So that's the part, that's that's kind of uh, what parents and uncles and aunties mean when they say that, you know, 11, 12, pardo, baad mein mauji mauji hai. There is some mauji mauji because you're not uh, traversing through the harder paths anymore, right? You're not getting to a place where the company HR would just reject your resume because you're not from a good university or not from a good company. Um, this this person is never facing that so try to choose your own multiverse right which path are you gonna traverse in your life and remember that nothing would beat experience and time right and if you try to get better day by day it compounds over time right i'll just take a small example for myself um you know i started using a personal computer in 2005 uh, again, my generation of kids, most of them did not have their own personal laptop or computer until they joined college. So I joined college at uh, in 2011. Before that, I had already learned how to use Photoshop, how to do graphic design. I was a graphic designer online. So I had a lot of experience, which now anyone new who's entering college and then getting a PC or a laptop would not be able to get immediately right it would take them that much long even if they take shortcuts it's going to take them at least half of that long right and this this gives me an unfair advantage right whether we should call it unfair or not is a separate debate but the idea is that it's giving me an advantage which you cannot easily beat right and it's an advantage of time so it all brings back to my point of start your hustle early as early as possible because you're gonna have to work hard in your life and it's just a matter of time of when you want to do that. And if you try to do it earlier, the latter parts become easier. Um, and it's just, yeah, that's your choice. And that's something you want to think about. Uh, when I, Same thing happened in the university. I learned making websites, doing back-end work, doing AI work uh, in the college itself. And when I passed out of college and got into my first company, most people did not know about AI. Most people did not know front-end and back-end development. And then again, there's an advantage there, right? And and those things help you on rewards. I was the person who got the biggest hike in my first year uh, after increment in my salary after the first year. And there are those kinds of things that would happen, right? And it's just happening because of the compounding nature of how much effort you've been putting in. Uh, there's a famous programmer, uh, I think one of the best programmers out there in the world named George Hortz, who says to be a great programmer, you have to be programming for 20 years. There is just no way around it. And it's the same thing for every skill out there. To ex to become an expert at something, you need to give it 10,000 hours in some way. Right? There are those kinds of sayings and they are true. That's what you realize after a while. Uh, so fine, you know, start early. Keep doing what you like. It doesn't have to be computer science. It doesn't have to be one of the core subjects. It could be sports. It could be anything that you think about. It could be drama, right? But find your thing. Find your thing and find somebody who supports you in that thing, right? There would be somebody in the family. There would be somebody in your teachers. There would be somebody in your professors and your friends who would support that vision. Try to put it forward. Speak about it and then just follow it. 
right? Once you have some belief and some people who have faith in you, I think you, if you start early, you will get far. The last thing that I want to talk about, and it's more so a lesson for everyone. So this is where I, um, I, I go from just addressing the school students to everyone out there, everyone who might be watching this video is how do we navigate the new AI world that we are stepping into? Chat GPT and more such things. So first of all, right, why should you even listen to me about this, right? So I've made a very simple analogy here, right? So if you, if you, if you have some sort of uh, issues with your car or if you want to know which medicine you want to take to cure an ailment, um, the people that you go to are the people who are experts in that field. Uh, you might go to a mechanic, you might go to a doctor. For all the AI stuff, you have to go to an ML engineer, an ML researcher. And I've been at those positions and I am at those positions and I'm building an equivalent of ChatGPT and Dolly and those kinds of models. Um, perhaps they are not as well known <laughs> by the general public, but it's exactly what I'm doing right now. Um, and that brings me to a point, right? How many of you can wiggle your ears like this uh, I, I i want everyone to try <laughs> most of you would not be able to do it uh, some of you are you know special in that capacity that you still can do it uh, the reason for this is simple it was a very specific uh, capability or ability that we had in our um, in our bodies um, when we were hunter gatherers or in the asian times and over time uh, you know, we did not require that anymore. At that point, we used, like in ancient times, we used to hunt and we used to eat meat and we used to hunt animals and that's how we used to survive. Um, now we don't do that anymore. Over time, over thousands of years, this, this ability has slowly started to fade away. Um, and it's not just that. Uh, evolution works like this. So whatever you're not using starts going away. Uh, everyone's using Google Maps nowadays or Apple Maps if you're a little crazy. Um, what's happening over here is that there are reports and there are publications out there that state that everyone who is just using GPS in any capacity is impacting their spatial memory um, in, in, and, and it's, it's reducing our spatial uh, memory, our sense of direction and a certain part of the brain gets affected basically because it does not develop at all. Right? You're not exercising that uh, muscle, so it's not going to develop. Um, and that's how it is, right? There were studies here, which you can Google up, have a look at, uh, which, which clearly showcase that older people were good at navigation skills in their brain. And that part of the brain was more active and more developed than the younger generation right now. Now, the thing was, until computers came, until Google Maps came, um, uh, all of this was still okay because it was one specific skill that was getting replaced and maybe, you know, part of the thing was going away. Once we start expanding this entire realm to chat GPT and more general AI models, it's not just giving you directions. It can give you entire world's knowledge at your fingertip, right? Soon it's going to be able to hear, draw and speak. In fact, some of the images that you see in the slides are from uh, um, chat GPT that can draw. Um, so I do have some beta access to those capabilities and that's what I've been able to do, right? Describe a certain situation and it was able to draw that for me. At that point, once it starts uh, growing further, it'll start see at some point it starts to seem more capable than we are ourselves. And at that point, I want you to think, right? Um, would you want to become the person who just uses chat gpt because what you're gonna lose maybe you will not realize it day to day and maybe it will not affect immediately in any way is that you're gonna get weaker in your basic cognitive abilities it's gonna affect your brain it's gonna affect your basic reasoning because you're not gonna rely upon your brain so much anymore right there is a reason that even if we know how to use a calculator we always learn addition and multiplication by hand in school right? There is a reason that you go into the depth um, and you get into the deep weeds of things it's so that you can actually understand and grasp what's going on before you start using a tool about it. And I think that's, that's what I want to 
share as a message here right that don't skip that depth right go into the deep weeds even once you have these tools available use them for the right purposes so don't be a blind gpt person is what i call this uh, wherein you just post a question on the left side if you see here um it's just post a question a mathematical question and you just get an answer right you will always get a decent answer me you know at this point maybe it can be incorrect sometimes down the road it's not not going to be incorrect 99% of times maybe at some point almost 100% of times um and you could always use you know a tool like this and get around things uh but it's not helping you develop yourself uh that's my point so um so instead you know use it as a verified gpt so solve things yourself try to come up with your own theories your own ideas don't lose the originality and the special power that you have inside of your brain right the more you use it the more you develop it use it then verify where you stand with what a uh, chat gpt answers right so uh, solve it yourself and then verify uh, with chat gpt or use it for learning purposes right if there's a certain concept let's say i don't understand acids bases and salts um, but i do like harry potter quite a bit this is where it can be useful right i, I just asked chat gpt hey i couldn't understand this concept from how it was taught in school can you try to explain it to me by using some harry potter references and you know it generates an entire story and it kind of perhaps explains things to me in a way that's more personalized to me and that makes more sense to me so so use them use these tools these ai tools as they become more available and more public um because they are going to be advantageous but then use them in a way where you're not sacrificing your own mental capacity for it right so uh that's that's uh, all that i had for today basically appreciate people uh find those who appreciate you and build a reward model around things so that you can keep progressing uh, towards your goals secondly open up and connect with your teachers and with peers and find your heroes uh for that school and afterwards third is that you have to hustle if you want to become great and uh, if you hustle early and build a habit it's going to pay off quite a bit uh and fourth is like even if you're stepping into the ai world go into the deep weeds there are no shortcuts for greatness so just do not skip things well that's all i really really thank every one of you who has been around who has uh, listened to all of this all of my blabbering and uh, it's been a pleasure and an honor to be able to speak and share a few words back with my mira family um and i'm i'm happy to answer some questions now if there's any part of being successful is about asking questions and listening to their answers I'm sure many of our students from the audience would like to ask our speaker some questions as they seek meaningful life goals and aspirations. My name is Priya Sharma and I study in class 12. That was a truly really captivating narrative. And my question for you is that would you please share some events from your life that you consider as meaningful milestones? Oh wow, that's a heavy question. Uh events in my life i consider as meaningful milestones well uh, okay jokes aside i think the biggest milestones have been uh, getting into bits and then finding my own path into getting into machine learning uh, you know that took a while and uh, and then again getting into my i think each each one of those journeys has taught me quite a bit and has pushed me beyond my limits um, and kind of made me realize that i can go beyond these limits um whether it was during the iit j studying preparation uh, phase or whether it was um, the, it, it, each one of these have required a lot of preparation a lot of me trying to figure out how i can utilize every single hour of my day every single waking hour uh, there have even been times where i actually logged each and every hour and what i did and how i utilized that um and i marked everything as green that was useful 
and there have been days where I worked for 14, 15 hours and there have been things like that, right? So these journeys uh, specifically have taken more work from me than others in my life. And and I think that's why they've helped me have a non-linear growth um, in those capacities as well. And I think uh, that's why I, I cherish those uh, milestones more than uh, perhaps others, right? It's, it's not so much... Uh, at the end that I got to that position, uh, I'm really grateful for, you know, being able to go to a good university, to be able to go to a good school, um, as well as, uh, you know, a good companies as well. But it's more about that I was able to push uh, myself so much that I was able to secure these things. And I maintain my belief that I can do that. Uh, and I think it it's now become second nature to me that I don't doubt myself anymore and I think that's something everyone should try to get to uh, there is no reason at any point to doubt yourself if you've been fortunate enough to uh, get a, a, a reasonably working body and brain I think uh, I think you're blessed enough to be able to do whatever you wish to do so yeah just those are the milestones Thanks for the question. Uh, okay. My name is Jessie and I'm a student of grade 11. Our decisions today affect our future. So my question for you is, what were the decisions that affected your position where you are today? Okay, so uh, another big one. <laughs> Which specific decisions led me to be where I am at now? I think it's mostly covered in my slides. Uh, you know, it's 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 mostly been the hustle of trying to work towards it um, and talking about it. Meta uh, to get to Meta, there was a huge six month preparation that I had to do during COVID time, and uh, you know, during COVID time, a lot of my batchmates, a lot of my peers all of them got to spend more time with their family uh, but i had this opportunity at hand and uh, to be honest uh, i did that was the sacrifice that my parents did and i did that i wa i spent most of the time alone uh, in my own house in bangalore where i was just uh, studying as much as i po possibly can after work because I was also working in a startup and startups do require you to work more hours sometimes. Um, but yeah, I think uh, that the the decisions were to make, to, to believe in myself and to just go on that journey and achieve something every single day. And that was the thing. Um, I used to have a weekly tracker of sorts. Uh, so I am a little organized of a person and uh, I used to have a weekly tracker where I just used to check, you know, how much progress have I made. And sometimes the progress would not be so much, but because of the habit of tracking progress, I would not, it's kind of like your Snapchat streak. I would not feel like breaking it. So, so it, it's, it, it's become more like that nowadays that I try to build those Snapchat streaks only that they're not in Snapchat or Instagram. <laughs> They are more so in real life and how I can get myself to be one person better, but then continue uh, consistently with that. Thank you for the question, though. My name is Dave Wilson. I am a student from class 12. I am really motivated by your thoughts. Sir, I want to ask you one life advice that you want to provide to your juniors. One life advice to the juniors. Okay, if I have to just choose one life advice, I think it would be to, um, oh man, and getting down to one is so hard. I have two in mind um, that I feel connect with me and can, can open up all other doors for you. One is, um, so, so, you know, choose the one that you like out of the two. One is to be to start being more expressive, right? And what I mean by that is, if you need help, if you feel like you know you don't know how to do something, ask for help. Um, if you think that there's something that nobody understands, make uh, you know open up to people and try to uh, 
put it out and see if people try to understand. Maybe somebody will. And the other thing is uh, to read books. Uh, I believe all the knowledge that I'm gathering, uh, living my life and, and, you know, going through ups and downs, you can learn most of that from books as well. Um, there are so many books, so many great books. Um, and all the teachers that you have around you would be able to recommend you many books. I can recommend you as well. Feel free to connect with me offline at any point. Uh, but I think uh, that's one source, right, which can give you all other life advices. So I would go for that. Go for the one wish to ask for more wishes. Oh, yeah, thank you for the question. I am a Raja Sharma, student of class 12, and I'm very enlightened by your books. So, my question for you is that, how one can stay safe in a cybercrime rampant space that we live in? Okay, so this is a very, very interesting question. Um, need of the hour. I think one of the things that everyone should do, which people don't do, uh, to be more aware about cyber crimes, is just actually talk about them and read about them. Uh, I think there's more, the, the problem is that fake news spreads more quickly than the real news. And the real stuff is often more boring and not you know, that uh, um, exciting, abrupt, uh, dangerous, scary, nothing that maybe always sparks some sort of dopamine in your body. So my suggestion in this is uh, one, to be aware, once you get to know something, spread it. All right, maybe, maybe 10 people are going to ignore it, but one person might read it, and that one person reading it makes a lot of difference. The other thing here is uh, that if something happens, um, then report it then and there. Uh, at least on the bigger platforms, let's say Google and all the platforms are owned by Meta. Um, uh, so I'm talking, let's say YouTube, Gmail, you know, Facebook, Instagram, all the major things. For all of these major players, major tech companies, they have a very large, they have large teams that are just supporting all these people who end up becoming victims of cyber crimes. Um, so there is a lot of support that you can get if you try to ask and reach out, right? And maybe some of the things would only get learned by mistakes. And that's fine to me, right? The problem, uh, the problem is, I think, where it becomes, um, embarrassing for some people right so don't so one one rule of thumb can just be to not share any photos or videos you feel could be inappropriate someday in the future not even right now maybe right now it's appropriate uh but as soon as you put it on the internet anywhere um uh, it's it can go anywhere you cannot control it so be more cautious about what you're sharing with whom uh, you cannot predict how a person's gonna be five years down the road right most people are good uh, but you know you can never just guess how somebody's gonna be so be very cautious about things that are inappropriate um, and other than that if if that's not an issue uh, the other major thing is just you know losing money uh, that's the second biggest thing that happened in cyber crimes, um, uh, along with identity theft. Uh, I think for identity theft and losing money, identity theft is, uh, there's, there's an easy workaround for that. Just always have a two-factor authentication setup, which means that as long as you have a phone, uh, set up an OTP. It will add friction, but there is no way uh, somebody sitting on the other end of the planet can access your uh, account after that. So every major service offers two-factor authentication. Use it, please. Um, and the last thing that I want to say here is, I'm, I'm saying everything off the shelf of my head. So uh, bear with me because this is not so structured right now. Uh, but the last thing that I want to add on this question is um, uh, when, when if you feel that, you know, you're being targeted for any sort of, 
a cyber crime where some money is getting taken from you uh, it's again a place where otps would come into picture uh, so and it's not just an advice for young people i think it's equally much an advice for older generation um because they i've i've myself seen my mom get scammed once and she lost money and it was <laughs> embarrassing to have uh to have her child be working at meta and then this happening with her so it, the the scammers uh and the cyber criminals they are pretty clever right so it's but it's it's important to speak up it's important to share it's important to use two factor authentication where and whenever possible it's going to add some friction to the entire login process and everything uh but it's going to keep you safe and never give out your otps to anyone except for your mom and dad maybe or your children when they're asking other than that nobody in any situation or scenario nobody will ever require it other than you so uh yeah if if those things can be followed i think that would mostly take care of things and that would reduce if everyone followed these i think cyber crimes would be reduced by 80 90% easily uh this is the major chunk student of class 12 first of all it is really nice to see you sir i feel proud to have such a great alumni at this conference my question to you is that you are a successful professional a blogger and a thinker how do you achieve a state of balance and what really motivates and inspires you to give your best every single day thank you for the kind words not just you everyone every one of you i was asked a question today um yeah uh it's always tricky to balance things i think nobody is perfect uh, not me uh not even elon musk nobody is perfect uh, on these things no matter how many things you are juggling so it's it's always something that as humans we strive to perfect um and to, and what's important is to keep trying that out um as long as you can uh i'm pretty sure if you ask the same question to anyone around you i think uh, all the teachers that you have around you are probably juggling more things than i am um and they would have probably a similar answer maybe a more wise answer than i have right now uh but uh, yeah i think at the end of the day it's about setting priorities um you know at, from a framework perspective i take out 10 minutes every day thinking about what has to be done today and among those what are things i need to get done and things that would be good if they could get done and those are my my top priority items and if i don't do them i stay awake or i i, I would um uh, i would make sure that they get done some way or i ask for some extra time right so but that priority is not changing anymore right because i've made that decision and it's about being in a certain phase are you in the planning planning phase or are you in a execution phase if you're in a planning phase do a good plan um according to what's needed right either work backwards from a deadline if you have something or work forward of, on whatever new things you're targeting and once you've created a plan you know take that as a gospel uh once you get into the execution phase just be somebody who has been asked to do something just one thing and tackle one thing at a time and do not try to do multitasking i know everyone would love to multitask i also multitask sometimes but it's not helpful i used to love multitasking and i used to be very proud that i can multitask so much uh you know 5 6 years ago and over time you realize that if you really want to get something done properly uh, and faster and in a way that you will rec- uh, remember it for longer um tackle it uh, with its own attention and with its own time and uh, yeah i think that's that's about it uh, there is no special formula for how to juggle things i think everyone figures out a way which works for themselves so i would i, I would just ask you to experiment uh, with what works for you there is no there's no single formula that works well thank you so much i think these have been some brilliant questions coming from um just 
you know school students i would not have been able to form such elaborate questions at that point so uh, really thank you so much and uh, thank you so much for listening to all of this um, um and thanks everyone who has been involved in one or the other way to uh, arrange this and thanks everyone who has uh, who, who has uh, uh, you know been bearing me get uh, with some delays on my end um i really appreciate everything and i really appreciate being able to be a part of this uh, special series dedicated to shri kb opry thank you so much education society the principal staff and the school fraternity we would like to thank bhavan gori for sharing his inspiring life journey and wisdom with the audience today a big thank you for sparing our time from your busy schedule and enriching